Hi, I'm Father George, Episcopal priest, four truck enthusiast, and smoke brisket champion. And today I'm going to be sharing with you my uh, experience installing a retrofit kit on our Generac 25 kilowatt liquid cooled generator. We've We've had this generator since 2008. It has served us well over the last 13 years, and most recently uh, through uh, winter storm Uri and the prolonged power outages that we endured here in Southeast Texas. A couple of years ago though, the generator shut down during its weekly exercise soon after starting, and the status lights indicated a low coolant level or high coolant temperature. Both conditions come from the same sensor, but neither condition was true. So I took the sensor out, noticed some debris built up on the probe, cleaned it, reinstalled it, and it worked fine. Recently though, it started happening again and eventually quit working no matter what I did. That's when I learned that in 2009, Generac issued a product information bulletin about this problem of false low coolant level indications, and they made a retrofit kit to address it. So if your generator has coolant uh, probe part number 0E2507, it needs to be replaced with a new probe and a sensor interface module. There are different kits depending on what controller your generator has. For R200 controllers like mine and above, you need Generac part number 0H50540SRV. Now I bought this kit from gentechpower.com for less than a hundred bucks, but if you have a panel other than an R series, you'll need a different kit. The installation is very simple. Drain the coolant level low enough to remove the probe, replace the probe with the new one, connect the sensor interface module on the original harness, route a new wire to connect to the fuel solenoid valve, and then replace the coolant and you're done. Uh, I took this opportunity to flush and replace my coolant while I was at it. And overall, it was a pretty easy job. I did have to do a little investigating to make the right connection at the fuel solenoid. So I thought I'd share that with you. So this is all that's in the kit. You've got some instructions. You've got a new probe for the coolant level and temperature. And then you have a, uh, uh, an interface circuit for that. This plugs into the probe. This plugs into the to the cable coming from the engine controls. And then uh, there's a wire here that is uh, getting power from the fuel solenoid. So we need to drain the radiator to blow the probe. The drain valve is under the fan shroud as indicated here, and you can access it right through here. Uh, it may be a little easier if you remove the battery, it gives you a little bit more room, but that's not necessary. Either way though, you need to disconnect the negative battery cable in order to do this job. So don't forget uh, to do that. So you can see the uh, actual radiator drain uh, up underneath the fan guard. Uh, that is an 11 16 um, nut. Uh, and you get a wrench on that and loosen that and then the radiator fluid will pour out. And you can see the hose barb there to put the hose on before you do that. So you could drain all of the fluid out. So here is the original uh, coolant level and temperature probe. We're gonna uh, disconnect the wire from it and remove this. So you can see that the new probe is quite a bit different than the old one. Uh, most notably, its body is plastic instead of brass, as it is here. Uh, the uh, uh, connection then is made of continuity as checked in between uh, this piece here and the probe as opposed to the body and the probe. That must have been part of the problem. So we'll put this one in now. So I've got the new probe in place where the old one was. I'm just going to make the connections now per the instructions. So for this part, it may be helpful first to refer to your generator's owner's manual and take a look at the wiring schematic that involves the coolant probe and the connections we need to make to the fuel solenoid. I found this made it a little easier to identify the components in my generator. Here is the diagram. It's over two pages in the manual. You can see the coolant level probe here, a representation of the original harness, the coolant level probe relay, and the fuel solenoid valve, which has a connection made to that relay. 
The retrofit involves basically inserting a sensor module or signal conditioner between the probe and the relay, and then making a connection to wire number 14 from the fuel solenoid. We just need to locate that connection point and we're all set. So if you look right here where the fuel comes in, so here's where the gas comes in, um, comes into this control unit here, there is a fuel solenoid here, and then there is a auxiliary fuel solenoid here. This is FS and FS2 in the manual, uh, in the diagram in the manual, if you just take a look at that. And what we need to connect onto is wire number 14, which connects the fuel solenoid. But if here are the wires that connect the fuel solenoid, and if there was a label on here that indicated wire number 14, um, it is not there anymore or maybe it was never there so uh, what I'm going to do is just figure out which one of those is ground and um, uh, we'll hook up to the other one okay so what I'm going to do is just check the continuity of uh, both of these wires to ground I'm going to check them one at a time so I don't uh, lose track of which is which you can see I've got my meter um, connected to the negative battery cable that I've removed here um, there's my meter there, and now I'm going to check these. So this one, and that is not, uh, that is not ground. You can see we've got some uh, impedance there, probably through a coil or through a circuit there. I'm gonna connect that back on, pull the other one off, and check it. Oh yes, that is our ground. So. I uh, could have also probably checked for 12 volts on the other pin, but I like looking for the ground. Okay, so there's the new probe installed, and I'm going to put on, this is the sensor interface module. Connect that to the new probe. Connect the original uh, engine harness wire to the sensor module, make sure it's seated. And then this wire I have routed back behind this reservoir and just um, zip tied it uh, to this same harness coming back here. There's a lot of uh, excess wire in my case. Um, and I've just strapped that back to this, to this harness here as well. So that's nice and secured. And then run that back behind um, the fuel intake system here. So this is what we need to get connected. And as we saw, this is wire number 14, uh, which the new wire is conveniently labeled. And all we really need to do is just connect wire number 14 onto the piggyback of the new wire I just ran, and then connect that to the original location on the fuel solenoid. And that is all there is to it. Replace the uh, coolant level now and we are good. And now we'll see how it does. Well, that's it. I hope you found this helpful. Until next time, God bless you, stay safe, and all the best to you and yours.